Okei, okay. ja tervetuloa Helsingin kaapelitehtaalle ja Domination TV parin tietysti. Ja voidaan sanoa, että on aika siitä fiiliksi, että Inflamesien poikien kanssa tässä otetaan niin kuin bissejä, jota he itse asiassa tarjosivat. Ja tota noin, niin on erittäin hyvät fiilikset ja kysellään poikien kuulumisia vähän, että miten menee. Hei, welcome back to Finland. How are you guys today? Thank you. I'm uh, pretty tired from Hungover. last... Hungover. Yeah, God we took damn. the ferry last night and you... I mean, everybody's taking the ferry here and you know what it's like. And then you get like this afterwards. And But this. I'm okay. <laughs> All right, you have been a bunch of times in Finland before. What kind of memories do you have from Finland? It's always very good memories. Uh, the shows are great and, you know... It's it's always very nice to come back to Finland after a long tour like this because it's very similar to home. People are friendly and you know the the showers are working, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> Now Finland is awesome. I mean, no matter if you do a festival or if you do a club show or, or bigger venues, it's always a lot of Finnish people being crazy in there and having a lot of fun. We always enjoy playing in Finland. That's why we make sure that we always try to do a couple of Finnish festivals always include Finland on the European tours that we do, so yeah, it's great to be back here. Cool. Uh, since you guys are from Sweden, what is the biggest difference between uh, Finnish and the Swedish crowds? I don't think there is such a big difference. Uh, I mean, uh, like I said before, it's very it's very similar to Sweden. Um, I, I think that, that perhaps uh, Finland has always been way more open for this kind of music. Um, and taken to us really fast, and um, you, can, you can see that like bands like uh, Children on Bodom, uh, Nightwish, all these different bands, they have a, a huge uh, impact on people, anybody in Finland, because they're on the charts, they have videos. It's it's not because it's a metal band, it's it's because it's a band, and this is really tough for Swedish bands to do in Sweden. It's getting way better now, but Finland is as I always thought has put an example of how you should treat metal. You know, it's it's another music style, and it's it's as many people, sometimes even more people, that listen to this than the R and B or whatever you get on. You know, nobody really cares about that. But Finland always had metal first, and that's awesome. Uh, you guys have re released nine uh, studio albums. How has your songwriting process uh, changed through the years? I think it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's. Uh, lately, we're all more involved in the development of the songs. Uh, Bjorn Jesper does all the music, but as to show it to us, we all help arrange it. You know, uh, and I think that's been more and more for each year uh, that we're we're just there more. Everybody's more involved, and it's more mature these days. I'd say. I'd say I, I just want to add that the reason why we have done this is because all five of us are out playing these songs live and live is where you learn you learn a lot from touring you learn a lot from seeing other bands but you also learn a lot from from playing live yourself and all us five are in here and doing this together so getting everybody's input is more important than ever to make sure we get songs that everybody's comfortable with live and also you get five different perspectives on a song and that helps you know and in the end The only people that I care about when when it comes to the music, that I, the only people that can say, oh, this is not good or this is really good, it's these guys. It's everybody in the band. The rest of the world, no offense, but fuck off. You know, it's <laughs> I don't. We don't really care. It, there's no point because you can't please everybody. But you can at least try pleasing us five. You know, And that's how we sort of look at it. Which of your albums is the most underrated? Underrated. Yeah. All of them? No. <laughs> I think that Reroute was probably kind of early, um, a little bit before its time perhaps, because we used a lot of keyboards and stuff, or samples and stuff like that on that one. And we also changed studios and, and producer for that album. And that made a lot of people not uh, wanting to enjoy that album as much as the previous ones because it was kind of a big step, people thought. There's no difference in the songwriting, there's no difference in, in the way we were thinking when we were doing the music, and we still play some of these songs today, and people love it now. But at that time, it, it, it was kind of tough to release that one. Still, it's our album, we're super proud of it, but I think it could have gotten a little bit more recognition at that time. Yeah, but what is your most overrated album? 
that's probably uh, probably all of them as well. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, um, overrated. Um, probably one of the live ones, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I, I actually say. think some of the earlier ones. Yeah, are. I was just going to say, say that. Because they, everybody wants songs from them, from them live, right? And they uh, ask for them like they were the masterpieces, you know, and everything we did like that after that was shit. Some people seem to think like that. But as we play some of the songs live, they're just standing there. Yeah. Hmm? Most like people two don't people. even know that. You know? So, uh, which is why, I mean, we're there to to put on a good show and, you know, play a big variety in, in the songs uh, throughout the whole career. And... Uh, but you can really tell the difference from the later albums and the earlier ones, you know. Obviously, you know, the, the later ones, most of the people know, but the earlier ones, maybe, you know, a tenth of yeah, the audience know. a handful know. of people. But I think also that everybody keeps talking about the really early, well, everybody, I'm saying people that are actually, that knows what we have done. They talk about the really early albums as the way Inflame sounds or should sound. But the, the thing is that Luna Strain, the first album, is a project. It's it's not even a band, and people don't realize that. And on Jester Race, that's when pretty much we found the sound a little bit, um, started tuning down and, and trying to get a more heavy sound picture. And then not until Colony, I'd say, when we found the, the proper lineup in the band, that's when the band started that's when we started touring properly and everything and that's with the that's how in flame sounds so the first couple of albums is people refer to them as the original in flames but it's it's not even in flames you know? colony is a masterpiece yeah, i think it so is. it's it's awesome we still play songs from there and it's i love playing those songs because it's something that we all finally it's us five we made it you know and we're still here 10 years later you know doing the same things pretty much the same kind of way of writing the music, but just with everybody even more involved. And it's, I think that's the, you know, that's when Inflame started, sort of. 